And then people, or creatures, the space creatures, other aliens, they look at him for a minute, they see the crown upon his head, and they bow down and go, it is our king. He looks upon his followers and he says, hey guys, remember that planet we were about to invade? I think we should knock off that whole war business and become peaceful traitors. And they all go, well, it's unusual, but we'll see if it works. Does that sound good? Everybody like yeah. that? Well, we still have a little bit of time here. If we want to, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want to talk a little bit more about our story and what it meant? I mean, it was a wonderful. Yeah. I think the story. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what it is. Someone was just hungry and they threw this yeah. pie thing. <laughs> So does this mean that the that this story took place on um, March 14th? <laughs> and the numbers that appeared that like, like, were a little bit that was that was That's a pie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? They had to they had to stop the sequence at some point. Yes. That's what we'll also call us their madness. It's a never-ending search for pie. Oh God! I mean, you can throw some symbolism in there. What does pie mean? And stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, well, pie. This could have been like, I don't know, <laughs> just basically like a hunger from whatever species. Maybe that's what that species was into. Oh. Yeah, the, yeah, I'm going to get my piece. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I like that. Quite a few cases where we had some physical descriptions of things. We had some movement of people there. A little bit of character development. Uh, brought in some, you know, fantasy elements to it. <laughs> the science fiction here and there. So does this, does this sound like a good thing to do? Should I it put another fun. buff together for next? Next yeah. I like it. I think it's cool. I knew it would be funny and fun, and I'm glad I came. Because I knew I would. I knew it'd be crazy. And I liked it. I wasn't sure what to expect, and I'm glad I came. It's a good time. Does anybody want to do a totally different story? I mean, how much time do we have? Well, it's so the rest of our lives, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this this concept is we could continue doing this type of thing in a different form. We don't physically have to be in the same room or whatever. Uh, I've had, you know, access to other rooms, right? You know, I, I can put this together in a public library or that type of thing. Right, we, we could, you know, 
know, I mean, so this could be done, I don't know how many of you have like web thing, webcams and stuff. You know, set it up as a web thing that you contribute your next piece uh, using a you know online uh, forum or something of that nature. That might be interesting, right? So here's your YouTube, you know, contribution to the next part of the story. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I I had thought though. With each with each turn, you could have, you could have like a deck of um, the cards where each one would turn a card. It wouldn't be enough to do the next part of the story, but it would add some twist in there. Oh yeah, yeah. So they would this, have to they would have to expound on. We it. could make this a board game type of thing where yeah. you got now you have all these little cards. So like you know in uh, Monopoly where it says uh, do not pass go or something. You pick up a card, and that card says, "Create a new character, or kill off a character, or here, you know, this is the time to introduce a new location." Or so now you have to figure out, well, how do I get there? You know, or how do I how do I get yeah. this character to that there position? And this could be a real, you know, we could make millions of dollars. <laughs> that's actually great. I think that's a great concept. Like you can do that. You can do the um, webcam and just have the continuous thing. You can have, you can incorporate all of YouTube and somebody starts it off and then they list somebody else that they, their um, YouTube account that they know. And then continue that on and on and on and on and on until either the story comes to a natural conclusion. We have to come up with a name for this. You know, uh, what did I call this thing? Uh, story of uh, story, story, uh, story, uh, story, uh, story on the fly or something? Yeah. Yeah. Storytelling. I mean, if, you know, there's a couple of games that resemble <laughs> resemble this concept, like Mad Scientist University, where I don't know if any of you guys have ever played that game. It's awesome, but you Mad Scientist University, and basically you're all a group of mad scientists plotting to take over the world, and you're all working together towards this thing. And so you draw a card and. Whatever it is, you have to incorporate it into your next part of your plan. And so whoever does the best with the card they've got, like there's one person, it's like um, any of those other card games where people judge like who came up with the best story or description. So then it moves around and then like, you know, you basically win, win rounds every time. And it's just great because people come up with the funniest, most hilarious storylines. And you know, it's just whoever's the best man scientist. It's great. I, like I wish I could. I wish I could find that game. I played it at another time. It was hilarious. It's called Mad Scientist University. Yeah. I like it. I like the idea. Yeah. I like. Uh, I know some other good one I like a lot is uh, Werewolves. That's a good one. Another thing. What is it called? Well, that's the like it's like the Who is the Werewolf game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's kind of. Yeah, I was going to say another thing that, that uh, might be fun is to uh, have each participant um, establish themselves as a character in the story with a, a name and a brief description. Maybe well, quite a nice yeah. variation. Yeah. yeah, or maybe you could represent a real location or you could represent yeah. some particular artifact that's being used. Is actually building off of that idea, if you have everybody establish a character, another thing you can do um, as the sort of passing of the torch thing, have them go on an adventure, and each time the tor uh, torch is passed, that person becomes the main focal point. They become the one that's making the decisions, that determines where they go, yeah. and after a certain amount of time, or until they reach a natural end, pass the torch, that person takes the lead and continue on and on and on. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Kind of like a, when, they, when they have the torch, you're kind of like your first person. To like this, this. And even you can, if you want to make sure everybody has a fair amount of time, put in like either a timer or an hourglass or something like that. And then once the time runs out, you've got to end it. You've got to end your turn and pass it on. There is one element I like better about the card idea, and that is that it, if you're not actually writing the story down as you go, um, you've got to have some sort of memory to keep track of everything that's happened. Yeah. I had to take all these notes. Yeah. Um, well, so my solution is that is just don't memorize anything. If you can't figure out what just happened, 
go off on a, on a fork, you know. Yeah. Then you have all these different things that don't relate to each other, and that's a problem. I mean, that's a, the other point, I guess, is you start off with a real simple plot that has an obvious endpoint, right? And then if everyone sort of follows the rules of trying to get to that endpoint, then you're going to have a consistent, consistent story. Thank you. So, you know, I, and just another idea too is that to, to it's like a twist on it, like you start at the end and then I'm gonna go back to the beginning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so we didn't do things like time travel and resurrections and all kinds of you know. I thought that you know, some of that type of thing. Like, you killed my character. I'm gonna bring him back. You know, in this alternate universe, there was this happening. And well, yeah, <laughs> but like the, the location led itself to be sort of an evil or something like that. Yeah. I knew that it was like a sci-fi, so it was like the portal was the only thing I could think of to get us into Oh, I gotta get a picture of that. Uh, you know, I've got that original doc. I just want to get it out of the camera here. Just to get it. This was how we got started. There was this wonderful little drawing. And so you start off with, you know, the game. We can have this whole world that we just kind of build up with like a different storyline branching off and then you know, this whole universe that a whole bunch of people well, well I, I don't know, but a lot of this story had elements of a role-playing game uh, called, like, uh, now that I, I met this guy is from here, and he claims that Stargate was ripped off from him, the concept, I believe in. And the game was called Fringeworthy, and in there you, know, you had the orb, but in his story they had like a triangle, and, and it would actually tell them combinations of how to work like the Stargate, you know, we didn't get that far in our story where they started and trying to figure out how to manipulate it, but they just end up going through this triangle. Basically, one of these things is found, that, you know, this gate doesn't work, but somebody gets this triangular thing, they go through it on planet Earth, and they find that, you know, they're connected to other worlds, and that's basically it. And it could be anything crazy, you know, like, but we just had, like, this crown artifact, and we had that orb that she created, and I thought, well, that's a cool thing to kind of put. But, yeah. you know. So I wonder, you know, there's obviously enthusiasts who like to do this type of thing, and this is this is a you know good genre for a lot of people. Uh, the previous thing was we had some of these professional writer types that would they had more structure, more thought about you know uh, some of these things. That this was kind of a little bit looser uh, storytelling, and yeah, I don't know, there might be some some variations on this, you know. Perhaps we could do like a, one of these uh, crowdsourcing funding things that provide money to professional authors to come up with a start. You know, here I want you to do, you know, do a, two pages, and then the next one is two pages, the next one is two pages, and you get some real good storyline going with with just something small in terms of a you know funding kickoff. Another thing to possibly build off of the potential um, point of view standpoint and maybe even the mobile storylines. What if you start as one character and then the next person you're passing it off to, you run into that character. And then the next person has to describe what happens then, whether it's like an altercation or just a friendly meeting or what have you, and then branch off on their own path and then run into the next person. Just keep going that way. Yeah. That way you're not, you know, completely kept to one storyline or another if you don't want to, right. you can potentially then branch off and right. do so something it, else. There's just a wide spectrum of things. What I was thinking is there would be people who would build a character and really feel strongly, you know, the cat character or whatever in the story, I really feel strongly about that, that's my character or something like that, versus you know the story just keeps on developing new people and stuff like that. You don't really have a attachment to a place or to a character. Uh, there's, you know, how do you, how do you, you know, use some way of governing that and trying to make that work a certain way? It kind of tries to prevent um, with having one central character that you really feel strongly about and then somebody's like, oh, I don't like that character, kill him off. And then that kills off everybody's interest in the story because now, your character's dead. Yeah. <laughs> How do you continue with your character gone? So, <laughs> without, you know, like, introducing a complete element that might contradict yeah. what everything was about up until that point. 
point. Yeah, so I know that like when they do TV series and stuff like that, they get a number of different writers in to do stuff like Star Trek. You know, the series were like hordes of different writers, and they'd have certain like storyline bullet points or some kind of yeah. guidance on, on what the story was about and who the characters were, you know, some, some basics that you have to adhere to. But like, it, well, yeah, it's kind of like in that bad side of this university where you have you have certain elements about the story that you have to tell that's follow on the card before you score the points. So actually, like, you know, a constant, like the crown, or maybe like you're saying, like a character is a constant, or maybe a couple. And then, you know, and you were talking about introducing things like, you know, kill a character, change location, do this, or people can have like, an alternative of like maybe two things to make Trump they could do. Like they could go either introduce a character or you know, change, you know, something like that. But, well, but the structure is is that's true, because that's helpful. Like because otherwise if you say, you know, once you kill your characters off, then it becomes all about whatever objects there are. And yeah. if those haven't been expounded upon, then you basically lose the basis for your story. So well, yeah, I, I wonder too that it could be like a community-based approach to this that people vote on which way the, the storyline yeah. goes, you know? So now you have, uh, you know, some, some governing body of some type that makes it clear that you're, you're not going to just throw something away that's of value to the, to the story. And that way, if you have an offshoot where the character dies, people don't like it. They can say, no, oh, it's not going to work that one. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what I think, like, professional writers do it. You know, they have a, a team of people who are developing this environment and all that. They invested their time. Their their job depends on this being successful. They're not going to do something stupid. Whereas here, it was pretty much, we're going to be done in a, well, 50 minutes anyway. You know. Or it looks like we're done now. Yeah. So, but appreciate it. This is what, did everybody have a good time? Was yeah. this